Hey everyone, Sean Smith here at Dedicated Commercial Recovery in Roseville, Minnesota. I'm the founder and CEO. Uh, continuing our interview series, episode number three with Sean Murray from DeBanked. And again, I just want to send a special thank you to Sean uh, for taking the time to be a part of this interview series. I think the content has been great as an expert in fintech and alternative finance. I really appreciated his perspective. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy. You know, what would be your projections for alternative funding in 2021? What do you think that's going to look like? How do you think the year is going to go? Yeah, I think um, the large technology companies have every advantage in the world. One of the things that happened this year was the stock market surged. And people said, hey, look, it's divorced from reality. It's det completely detached. We can't be having a rally. It's going to crash. And I think that's actually not correct. I think the market perfectly reflects reality because it reflects the largest players, the publicly traded companies and a lot of the e-commerce companies who actually did very, very well. Um, we saw companies like PayPal and Square and Shopify basically hit all new records at the same time that their non-tech competitors were suspending funding altogether. And... I think that they have built a very, very, very powerful pipeline to grow even bigger. And some of them have done so because they participated in PPP and they've built up an, an amazing um, list of leads, right? Because even if they weren't able to get everyone PPP money, they still have the inquiry that they can reach back out to people and say, we're sorry we couldn't get you PPP, but we do have this other product. And if you weren't a large technology company who participated in that, then you're not going to have that same access, right? So it may, you know, it may sound kind of discouraging if you're a small one, two, three, four person shop. Um, but I, I really do think that the largest players are poised for the most success in 2021. If you have technology, and I, and I mean actual scale, I don't mean a CRM. I mean, you have a legit scalable business that's automated. You're in a really, really good spot. And what we're seeing is that the regulation that's being passed also favors those, those companies. And so that's, that's the other side of it, is that when we have this regulation or new law come out, is that the ones who are hurt the most by it are the ones who, you know, who aren't scalable to comply with it. Because you can have these large companies who hate the law and think it's going to be really, really difficult to comply with, but they can spend a million dollars to comply, whereas somebody else can't. Um, so, so maybe that sounds kind of discouraging in a way, but at the same time, we're kind of approaching where FinTech was all about being debanked and unbanked. That's why we're, you know, we're debanked, it's outside of banking. And it's slowly mm -hmm. shifting back towards banking, right? And then you say, okay, it started here, and now it's here, the end. We're back to banks, we're rebanked. But then what? What's? <laughs> but then what? What's we're happened? <laughs> we're rebound. But then what's happened? Right now we've created this entire market dominated by banks, an entire segment of customers who can't get products from banks, and the whole cycle is going to start all over again. We're going to have some very very creative people and say, how can we service the customers that the banks are not? So that's more yeah. of a longer than 2021 projection, but that is the projection that I'm making. Even though we're trending towards banks kind of being the future of fintech. We're going to reach some point where it's all banks again, and it's going to go all the way back around, start over. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and, and, you know, you look at uh, really the alternative finance MCA space was really born out of uh, what used to be the equipment finance industry kind of taking what the banks wouldn't do mm -hmm. and then them becoming the banks. So then that led to the MCAs coming in and filling that gap right and then now again it's all just kind of moving up market and there's just going to be another segment because so much of small business needs that funding that as these guys get bigger and they tighten their underwriting standards right then it leaves this huge segment of business that needs access to funding that no they don't want to give to them so 
I couldn't agree with you more on, on your thoughts on that. So uh, final question, and, and I appreciate again the, the time and, and joining us. Uh, you know, how excited are you to get back to in-person events? I know I am like anti, I, I reached out to you a bit ago. I'm like, I'll sponsor one. Let's, let's find a state to go to. I'll be your first sponsor. But, you know, for you, like, I know that's been a, become a big part of debate and, and uh, you know, I thought it would be a kind of a funny way to wrap things up is what's your thoughts on that? And when do you see that happening? And yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously really excited to get back to doing events. And I thought I was the smart one by postponing our event from last May, the in-person version to this coming March. I thought I was really smart because you had a lot of shows that moved to the fall or they moved to the winter. And I'm like, we, you know, we pushed out even farther. We're going to be safer than safe. And as it turned out, you know, the year did not go as a lot of people anticipated. And so we had to move our big annual show, the biggest one we do each year, um, Broker Fair, to this coming December. So our big show is not going to be in March. It's going to be in December, December 6th in New York. But that doesn't mean that we won't do a show between now and then. I know you're, you're somebody that asked, right? Yep. You know, would you do a show earlier if we could? And the answer is we will if we can and if people will come. Um, there are, you know, there's a variety of states of where that can be done. Um, New York is a pretty restrictive state. We're in New York City, so <laughs> we're still, right. all of our restaurants are still closed here, where you can do right. takeout, technically. But um, if, if, there's a, if there's a place where it can be done, you know, we'll certainly, we'll certainly do it. Uh, and so, it, yeah. has to, it has to make sense. It has to make sense. It has to be safe. You know, I, I totally understand that. Um, I, I'm just so antsy to get back to it. And I think our our country is, you know, I think a large majority of people are really antsy to get back to things. I think people are volunteering for the vaccine. They want to get vaccinated. They want to get things back to normal, you know, whether you're a vaccine person or not, just the idea of getting past this, this pandemic and COVID and getting restaurants open and getting things going again is something that is across the board. So, yeah, I mean, humanity in general has a very short term memory. There have been pretty smart people that have gone on social media and made predictions like the New York City real estate market will never, will never recover. And mm -hmm. ever. They think it will never recover ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, it's probably going to recover maybe in just a year or two. I mean, it's going to be quick. And people here, uh, you know, we've all been inside for such a long period of time. That the people are going to be so excited to go out to the bars again and people are going to want to move here again. They're going to want to have apartments here again. It's going to happen so quickly and it's going to happen with events too. People are going to be so excited to hang out. People might be too excited, right? So we, I'm, I'm we might, genuinely worried about that. I am genuinely worried about We might have to hire special security, you know, to, <laughs> to calm people's excitement, but it's going to be, it's going to be a good time when it all comes back. Well, yeah, we're, we're ready and you know, Thank you. Thank you again for joining me on the vlog here. And, uh, you know, you know, dedicated is a big proponent of debate and of you. And, you know, I, I know some interesting things we didn't get to talk about, but if people should be checking out debate.com, there's debate TV. That's got a lot of great content on it. There's a lot of funders, brokers, ISO sponsors, access to, to great things there. And, uh, you know, obviously when we get back to in-person events, I think that dedicated success is so much predicated, not just on our brand and who we are, that's kind of different in our space, but also in the ability to meet people in person, to build relationships with people. And DeBang's been a great community for that. So, so thank yeah. you for everything you do, Sean. I appreciate it. Well, thank you too, thank you too Sean. And uh, we enjoy working with dedicated as well. Two Sean's make a right. <laughs> there you go. Right. But uh, <laughs> Thank you, and, and thank you for everybody for joining in and, and, and chiming into our blogs. Please like, share, subscribe, and as always, God bless. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Again, thank you for tuning in, and a big thank you to Sean Murray for taking the time out of his schedule to be a part of our interview series. I really hope you've enjoyed the content over these last three episodes. We'll continue to do these on Mondays with vlogs, with interviews, with special guests. And please like, subscribe, share. We really appreciate that. And as always, thank you for tuning in and God bless.